I always like to end on a positive note, so here is a rousing, uplifting song which is guaranteed to cheer you up. When you attend a funeral, it is sad to think that sooner or later those you love will do the same for you. And you may have thought it tragic not to mention other adjectives to think of all the weeping they will do. But don't you worry, no more ashes, no more sackcloth, and an armband made of black cloth will someday never more adorn a sleeve. For if the bomb that drops on you gets your friends and neighbors too, There'll be nobody left behind to grieve. And we will all go together when we go. What a comforting fact that is to know. Universal bereavement, an inspiring achievement. Yes, we all will go together when we go. We will all go together when we go. All suffused with an incandescent glow. No one will have the endurance to collect on his insurance. Lloyds of London will be loaded when they go. We will all fry together when we fry. We'll be French fried potatoes by and by. There will be no more misery when the world is our rotisserie. Yes, we all will fry together when we fry. We will all bake together when we bake. There'll be nobody present at the wake with complete participation in that grand incineration. Nearly three billion hunks of well-done steak. We will all char together when we char. And let there be no moaning of the bar. Just sing out a tedium when you see that ICBM and the party will be come as you are. We will all burn together when we burn. There'll be no need to stand and wait your turn. When it's time for the fallout and St. Peter calls us all out, we'll just drop our agendas and adjourn. We will all go together when we go. Every hot and top and every Eskimo. When the air becomes Uranus, we will all go simultaneous. Yes, we all will go together when we all go together. Yes, we all will go together when we go. I just sent that to you um, because I was wondering how, since we have a comedian here, he would then be... I'm sorry you cut out, I can't hear it. He got muted. That's mute. That's unmute. Yeah, you're unmuted, but Chris is muted. Oh. She has to unmute herself. Okay, sorry guys. I, <laughs> right. I guess I was muted. Um, <laughs> let's try this again. So <laughs> I have a very, very, very special guest host with me today. You all know him. I'm pretty sure if you don't, I don't know what's up with you. Um, the very great great Graham Elwood, the political vigilante himself is in the house. Say hello, Graham. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris. It's great to be here. <laughs> Thank you for being on. Um, just really quickly, guys, if you're wondering how I got him on my show, I bribed him for nearly a year and a half <laughs> through through Patreon. Uh, so he is he does take bribes. Just so yes. you know, his Patreon is linked in the show notes. If you would also like to bribe Graham, 
So yep, I'm easily <laughs> bribable. I'm a uh, nightclub comedian and an out of work game show host, so you can bribe me pretty pretty easily. <laughs> Unless of course you work for the oil lobby, uh, then it's a little going to be a little harder for you. Right. <laughs> so anyway, today me and Graham are going to be talking to Jennifer Hines, who is a climate information activist with a background in IT, and also. Yan, like his name right, is Yan, um, curator of the database of environmental change. So thank you both for coming, Jennifer and Yan. I, I'm really excited to hear about this uh, database. I think it's something that's highly needed with all the confusing information that we're getting from the internet. And I'd really like you to just, um, first off, introduce the project, tell, tell us a little bit about it. Well, Jan, would you like to? Yeah, okay. Um, well, in some ways it goes back many years. Uh, it certainly goes back uh, this particular database, although I've been creating databases and uh, information intelligence systems for many years and even used to get paid for it. And, um, uh, but this one goes back five years and because five, well, about 10 years ago, I began to get wise as to what was going on, indeed before that. Um, and I thought I'd better put my skills towards, um, you know, really monitoring in a serious way, using the technology that we know so well um, to make not just a record, but also an intelligence uh, resource. Uh, so five years ago, I started putting information into a database that has been um, made into quite a different sort of interface and way of working and way of seeing of the world um, by myself and my colleague, Simon Eaton, who is the kind of software side of the uh, partnership. Um, so every day, I mean, for my sins, every day I sit for about two hours and I take about 50 articles that come through um, from various sources, but you know, mainly newspapers and uh, scientific papers and also uh, social media sources as well. And they go into this database um, and uh, they then get classified into a hierarchy, which I wish I could show you, because, um, but I didn't know that we, I thought we'd have some way of showing it, but uh, it's a- uh, I can put that, give that to you in, in Facebook, Oz, if you want, would you? I would like that, you know, if okay. we could, I could just point it out to people what was, what is actually, you know, what it looks like. Um, because it's a bit hard to imagine uh, in a way, but it is another way of accessing things. But the, the nature of it is, is that uh, those 50 articles get placed every day into a hierarchy, classification hierarchy. Um, and it, you know, for instance, if you want to find out the very latest on what's happening to sea ice, it goes into sea ice. And, it, you know, there's a whole list of things which I had wanted to, you know, just take you down through. And, uh, but we can't, all oh, right, okay, that's the beginning of it. Over here on the left is what I'm talking about. I don't know whether that's live or not. Can you, can anybody open them so that they can be read? Can you open them, Moss? Click the little plus sign. Um, which which ones do you want to uh, want open? The emissions, the first one, the drivers. You know, you know, okay, it's basically you can see that it's so. If we got something up there, people can see that. The the, the first break is drivers and uh, the impacts of, of the drivers and under each of if if you go into. Uh, it's a bit hard, yeah. Yeah, that's emissions right there. Yeah, yeah. Go to tipping points. That's the most. In Let me start there. Can you open up tipping points? Yep. That's the most I can dramatic do one of all. 
And so if you look at those, and to bring back to, so under each of those headings, you can see, for example, uh, records. If you go into records, click on records. Got it. 1,000 whatever records. And there you go. This is, this is, yeah, okay. So now, um, you know, this is from February. We're going to be updating this um, in, in computer terms. It's real soon now, RSN. And uh, I, I kind of mean that next week. But then you can see what all the latest records are, um, you know, that have been collected under that the, that that heading. And uh, so, you know, if you run your eyes down that, um, it's it's pretty amazing, you know, the the number of records that is being broken. That is a finding um, in itself. So um, the other thing to look at is to go back to the you know to the left hand bar again move it over so we can see the the left hand bar got it all right uh, brilliant okay and so what we're going to be doing today uh, i thought because jennifer and i are this goes in every day it is being updated um i don't think that remotely in this way i can really demonstrate it but um i would like to sometime uh because there's another way of looking at it as well, which if you go into all those, just to, to make the point, if you go into those records and then look at it in terms of the relational view, which you'll see at the top, which I, I know we can't do, the database will automatically, and it's, it, it will automatically give you an analysis of where all those records are appearing, you know, whether it's in sea ice loss or whether it's in, um, you know, a thousand other things or, so it, it, it has an inbuilt an analysis. And so it's another way of um, actually accessing the information that's out there. At the moment, there's uh, 70,000 records. They're all, all chosen in terms of their, not in terms of whether I agree with them or anything like that, that is completely against what we're doing. It's, it's not a representing in any way of what I think except you know, I designed the, you know, the classification system, but to be as, as if you will look at it closely, you'll see, I hope that the language is very, very neutral. And uh, you know, there's no, no, no emotional words in there. That's the idea. It's supposed to be as deadpan as possible. And so it all just goes in there. And uh, you know, when I'm doing it, I'm not thinking about whether this is gonna prove this or whether it's right or whether it's wrong, it's whether it's pertinent. If somebody in the future is going to be doing some research or if you're doing research now, you would wanna know that. And so if it goes in there, it's something that somebody who's looking into sea ice or um, you know, whatever the, uh, the categories are, would want to know that. And so, you know, in effect, the database, if you, if you look at it, tells a story within each of those categories. So that's basically the way it works. And so to bring it to, you know, it's, it, it's a fair bit of work to um, um, access the information. You've got to read it and um, all that kind of thing. So one of the things where, where Jennifer and I came into this, um, is that I saw what she was doing um, with, you know, making videos out of single articles. And so she would do it, and then maybe you should speak to this, Jennifer, and, you know, briefly say, you know, how you were doing articles for, you know, making a video of Bill McGibbons, or Bill mm -hmm. McGibbons articles and, you know, all that, because that was quite unique. Um, I think, and still is. So over to you, Jennifer. Oh, absolutely. I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you so much for having us on. Um, basically, I started doing videos um, with videography, um, with very kind of hard hitting articles, um, like about eight months ago. So you take an article, you know, you get a professional narration of it, and then you put pertinent videography with it, because articles are very difficult for us to get 
through. You know, reading is sort of a lost art, especially technical reading and stuff that's difficult to get through. But if you have a bunch of videography and disaster uh, footage and things that are very pertinent to whatever is being spoken about, all of a sudden this information that was so um, mysterious and complicated no longer is. It's like a new way of um, absorbing climate change information. So um, two, two that I've done that I'm very uh, proud of. One is Life on a Shrinking Planet. And this is based on an article by Bill McKibben that came out in late uh, November of 2018. And you can look that up on YouTube, Life on a Shrinking Planet, it's just less than an hour. And it is actually a brilliant way to absorb this type of information. And I'm pretty addicted to sharing climate change information. I think it is absolutely, without a doubt, the most important issue that we are facing as a species or ever have faced as a species. And I'd like to give a big shout out to this database because I have to see if we can make it a little bit more exciting, right? So this <laughs> database, it sounds like very boring, right? It's not. This database of environmental change is kind of like a crystal ball. And it's, and, and I'm an IT person for a long, long time. And Yan reached out to me and I, I took a look at it. I was like, oh my God, this thing is freaking brilliant because it's, it's, it's been fed with high quality content and articles for the last five years without missing a beat. And it's cross categorized, cross flagged. You can ask it a variety of questions. It's kind of like a magic ball. And you say, well, gosh, what is going to happen if this is going on and this is going on? And what are the interrelationships between these things? And what is the effect going to be? You can very quickly get a result set of your question of very pertinent articles and just scan through the articles. That's one level. However, there's another level. And that's the the summary level that uh, that um, that Yan is doing, and basically he's taking this and he's kind of digesting these different result sets into fairly concise verbiage. And Yan, of course, as you hear, he has a very deep, lovely voice with a lovely, proper British accent. Aww. And uh, that's true. And so we just kind of face it in the back with some kind of cool, chill music with, you know, kind of tension underlay. So it's, you know, interesting enough for people, but that actually helps out a lot. And then on top of that, you take the content from the articles and supplement it with content that you find on the internet or whatever that has to do with what you're talking about. And all of a sudden, something that was so mysterious has been digested and is accessible to anybody. And it's very interesting because it has vi video imagery um, and footage with it as well. And so I think it's actually a brilliant communication tool. And I'm quite of the opinion that communicating with all people is paramount importance. And you have to make it interesting because everybody says, oh, climate change. And it sounds kind of boring. It is not boring. And once you start to get into it, it's like anything. You get into it and then it's kind of like you get a wedge. You, you get your kind of wedge into your, your block of wood and you kind of crack that open. And then all of a sudden, all these things that were before sort of mysterious, the interrelationships, the feedbacks, the implications, all of these become magically accessible and very complex ideas can be taken on board. And I think this is the most critical thing because if you can educate the common person who does not have a background in science and is not obsessively drawn to digesting all this information, suddenly you have change. You have mental change. And the thing that I am most focused on is the change in the mass consciousness. And I think that the education of everyday people and getting them on board so we can actually make changes as a world is the absolute most important thing that we can do. So that's kind of my bit on it. Okay, information is power. And I'm really, really interested to see what Graham has to say about this or what questions he would have, because I've kind of had a little bit more time to digest it and, mm -hmm. and find out more about it. But I want to know what Graham thinks and, and if he has any questions for you guys. Well, uh, first of all, I think it's a fantastic idea and platform. And, and what um, you know Jennifer is talking about here, uh, 
makes a lot of sense because I think that's the thing I come across when I talk about climate change and a green new deal or whatever people kind of just it just seems like they're at the, the foot of Mount Everest of the of information and they just are like overwhelmed by it and I went to this uh, sunrise movement of like green new deal sort of town hall doing this tour and they they showed this and this is to Jennifer's point about like how video can really capture and get the point across more. We're in, we're just in the digital age of where everything's done in video and and shorter clips. That's just the, that's just where we're at. Um, and someone on a you know a four minute video is going to probably have more power and impact than somebody reading a, a five to ten minute article. Um, and so one of the things they showed was they, they they there was this sort of cartoon made based on an Intercept article um, that was sort of like a fictitious story. It was like 20 years in the future after 20 years of having a Green New Deal. And uh, it's like 2040 and it, it outlined, you know, the, what the world would look like with a, with an actual Green New Deal. And it was, it's so succinct and, and um, you know, it's basically now through the eyes of like Ocasio-Cortez is, is, you know, in her late 40s or 50s reflecting on how the Green New Deal worked and, and helped people and it, it was really like I was in an auditorium full of people going oh this makes sense and I think it's great that you're doing that so my 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 question would be um to Jennifer and to Jan is what um yeah sorry how, yeah, yeah sorry uh what um you can mispronounce my name I'll be all right uh <laughs> is how does the person who's just completely sort of new to this, who is just sort of waking up to like, wait, what? There's We have 11 years left? How can they, what like immediate, um, easy to use resources are on your site? Or, or and also what is sort of the plan of, of uh, as this site grows to, to make it for the person who hasn't been like myself or Chris or whomever who like we've been doing a lot of our own research, but someone who's just sort of like, wait, what, where do I go? I don't know anything about this. What, what are the sort of the, the basic tools that you have on your site and, and what are the other ones you're looking to implement? Well, Jan, do you want to take okay. that? Yeah, okay. Um, well, the database on the site is not really as it is for um, complete, complete, newbies to the to the uh to the issue but what we're going to do with the interim and but what it is designed for and what it will be i think very useful for is not just academics and students but anybody who wants to spend a bit of time and one of the things that it will do to you and the the tool that is there that gives you the ability to do that is what I, you know what we call the context or schema the, the thing on the left hand side which frames questions for you it's a framework and so you can go in and very easily research a specific topic that's in the database and you know most of the work is done for you journalists i mean uh, a great thing that's what I was going to say, like for the independent media that wants to, to get all the information uh, that's objective uh, for their stories, they can go into one place and search that particular topic and get all the information from that one. And then the short videos that you're going to make in order to cover like the conclusions. Going to come to next, yes, is that um, to get to the, as, you know, to the people, um, I think that this is very exciting for me because, um, you know, I, I come from, I'm a pretty sort of dry intelligence analyst and the whole sort of process of, you know, what we do is removing emotion, putting distance, using indirect language, you know, is it's never me that speaks, it is the data that speaks. And so that is pretty boring really. And so, you know, unless you are having to do it, we've discovered, and you're being paid to do it, you probably won't, you know, maybe you will get addicted to it, because it's all, you know, you can do it. <laughs> but, um, you know, what we're thinking is that making these videos is the, uh, the real tool that will make the connection. 
And uh, so how many videos? It could be hundreds of videos. And we've had to start somewhere. And we started with, I mean, what I wanted to do was I thought, oh, 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 we've got to do um, the most you know, dramatic part of it first, which is, is you know, you would see as tipping points and uh, records and, you know, collapse and all that kind of thing. And Jennifer very wisely said, well, that, you know, maybe we should start with something small. And so, you know, about the smallest thing there in, in, in one sense is the, uh, the, the part under um, the, it's under impacts, humans, health, mortality, and then you have, you know, what it's doing to people's minds. You know, there's a category for that. And so it's not that big. It's about 300 articles, I think. Um, quite a lot. The category is relatively new because climate change and mental health, three years ago, nobody was talking about it. Two years ago, maybe, you know, there were just a few things coming through now it's 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 growing fast and so this is part of the the nature of the database as well another part of the tool is that it can show you the number of articles that are dealt with under each heading or category is an indication of people's attention you know this is what people are paying attention to because this is what they're writing about and so now they're beginning to write about um, mental health implications. And so that's why we chose that one to be the first. And uh, we've already done a, you know, I've done a voice with background and, you know, it, it, it's, I don't know what, we don't have a deadline particularly yet, but it's, it's getting sooner. But once we get that out, but the, the thing I wanted to say, um, you know, although it's a small category and although, you know, by definition, I put those articles there in the first place. What I discover, and this is part of the process, when you look back at the stuff, you see what you missed. Mm. And there's so much there that, you know, I, I didn't know, just for one example, that environmental change was making us stupider. Now, not many, I didn't know that. And I put the damn things there. How stupid am I? But, you know, there it is. There's a whole section on what it's doing to people's IQ. And I found that surprising. And I put that there myself. What are the causes of that? Well, I mean, there, you know, C CO2 is, a, is, is one of the causes. Um, you know, I could read from it. Um, but, yeah, CO2, heat uh various kinds of uh well of course lead poisoning things that have come in the food uh, a major cause of it is a awful chemical pesticide called <clears throat> i've got to pronounce it correctly chiropiphyrus chiropiphyrus which is even worse than um than you know roundup um and there's a lot of data and then, of course, there's autism, and there's an amazing article in there, which I didn't know, but you've got a, you know, that you've got a Harvard researcher, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, who's done a lot of research, and her conclusion is that if we keep eating, or if people keep eating, the food that they are now eating with the amount of glyphosate that's in it, there will be 50% of children will be autistic in I don't know it was 10 years something like that no. amazing wow. this is not this is not you know some crazed person saying this this is a Harvard professor and you know in the database and in the, the report that we're doing it shows exactly what her you know very very compressed versions of her findings and they're all based on statistics and um, you know things that are so that's my point is that Within each of these hundreds of categories, when you look into it and pull out, you know, those kinds of facts, um, you get a story. And um, yeah, so that's that that that's going to be the first one. Uh, Mm -hmm. and yeah, and it's called mind breaking. Mind and basically, what it does is you've got a result set 
what happens to human intelligence with all the factors that are happening on, on Earth right now, you know, environmental change, you know, we've got chemicals, we've got Roundup, we've got increasing CO2, we've got plastic particles in our carpet, we've got all sorts of things going on. So the question is, what happens to people at large if this sort of trend continues and we are exposed to all these factors ongoing? And the answer is, in a variety of ways, intelligence is blunted. And, you know, um, that I think that is actually fascinating right there, that we are blunting our human intelligence. So this is a way to get this out to the masses, to people at large. And hopefully, you know, if you create, I, I don't uh, suspect that, you know, the common person is going to be, you know, trawling through the database of environmental change. I think it's highly unlikely. But if you can influence a few people who are movers and shakers, aka, you know, Graham Elwood or whoever, right? <laughs> it's happened. It's happened. No, I'm serious. Uh, no, 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 no. I am serious. So, so I'm going to tell you a quick little story and I'm going to tell you how somebody changed his programming. So I'm working right now with um, a radio DJ host in Atlanta, Georgia. His name is Dougie the Abolitionist. He has a show called Voices of Dissent on an AM radio in Atlanta, Georgia. And unbeknownst to me, I, I made a video some years ago called The Arctic Methane Monster's Rapid Rise. Maybe some of you might have seen it. He got hold of that. So one of his friends said, oh, have you seen this video? You've got to see this video. It sums it all up. And that video was just something I made. It's another story. So he watched that video. And I'm, you know, I, I don't have like a huge scientific vocabulary. I don't make things very complicated, but I am a good analyst. And there was something about that video that woke him up. And he used, he's, um, he's a black guy. It's a black show. And he used to just talk about black incarceration and, you know, um, black uh, disenfranchisement, all sorts of black issues, right? But he never really spoke about climate change. That video affected him. It affected him in his core. And all of a sudden, he's like, holy crap, this is happening. And he changed his programming. And now climate change is another one of, you know, the, the, the plot points in his platform and I've been on his show seven or eight times and he has been um, very instrumental we've been working together and we've created hot house earth we've created life on a shrinking planet and we've created um, there was there was one other one that we created as well and they got a lot of views and if you affect the right people right those people become they're more powerful than you they have platforms they have listeners and those are the people that are the movers and shakers so I kind of see the work that um, that Jan and I are doing kind of like seeding the the base level so we affect people who are speakers who have a platform and educate all sorts of people whoever wants to be educated but i think it's really important that humanity at large get with the program and start to understand what is happening to our earth so this is kind of um our general thrust well i i think that's fantastic and i think it's it's a it's a really great resource because it's one of the main things that when i do my show the political vigilante um, and a lot of my viewers are like, well, what do, I, how, what do I do? How do I get involved? And many of them are very sort of uh, proactive in terms of going out and getting research and information. But having one, one website as yours is to do this, I think is highly effective. And I think that's the key is to get people that have followings for whatever reason, whatever they're entertainers or models or whatever, to start saying, hey, climate change is going to affect everybody. And you need to address it, not just post a photo in front of a tree on Earth Day saying hashtag Earth Day, but like this is a website to get involved with, to learn this information and study. Because what you just talked about, the blunting of intelligence, I was sort of aware of that, but not, not as, as succinctly as you just put it, which is that now I'm going to start using that verbiage because I try to integrate climate change and a Green New Deal in almost every video I do because I think it's all interconnected. Um, so... Uh, that's right there is very, is very helpful. Uh, and one other thing that we want to do with it, 
is um, uh, in effect to have shows. We, we, we this this first one, the mind breaking one. Uh, there will be we'll do our video, which will be pretty segmented because you know it's a very structured process, and so we'll have a video. I'm just writing up brief at the moment, um, and uh, but and then we'll after each segment we'll break for like a panel discussion. And so the first panelist, I mean, it might be some of you, but the first panelist is going to be um, somebody called Ella Dakota, who is another database person, but a, uh, an amazing collection of folk remedies, homeopathy. I mean, she has such a huge knowledge. And so, um, we present her and Jennifer and, you know, the database will present what it's saying, and then we can discuss it. And, you know, again, getting somebody like Ella Dakota, which she likes to be known as Dakota, um, there, it shows, you know, something can be done to alleviate the particular thing that people are suffering from um, in that sense. And so that, that it becomes, a way of sparking another kind of conversation that is not a conversation of it's this way or no, 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 it's this way. And, you know, you have this always this debate. It's, a, you know, it's the database is saying this. Um, this is nobody speaking. It's just what is being said by, you know, the collective intelligence, if you like. We can talk about it. And so in that way, you know, one hopes that you can have a much more kind of generative conversation that comes out of it. You know, not one that's right and not one that's wrong. And, you know, for instance, with this mind breaking thing, I don't think it matters whether you're a Trumpist or whether you're, you know, anywhere on the political spectrum. You know, if you see this information, you're going to have to think about it. And there's no sort of pre-position is that, you know, no, it can't make you stupid. You know, they haven't thought of that. So it, you know, the idea is to bring in another form of less polarized discussion about these things. And I think that's important too. Right, and I'd like to make another point as well. So this is a movement in mass consciousness. This is taking things out of the intellectual realm and putting them into the emotional realm, which is where it needs to live if we're gonna make change. And it can only go into the emotional realm if you have good knowledge. You know, so it's all very well and good to say, okay, so these are this idea, this idea, this idea. But then if you put all those points together and they affect you at an emotional level, all of a sudden, guess what? You are galvanized. You For are sure. an agent of change. Instead of just kind of being a clueless person who feels rather helpless, you've taken on board this interesting and amazing and life-changing and pivotal knowledge. And you can go out and affect your world. Whoever you touch, you are going to affect that person because you are carrying this knowledge as a real <laughs> thing inside your core. And you become a different kind of person and you become galvanized you galvanize others and that's how mass change happens you have to change the mass consciousness and guess what it's happening right now yeah you slowly know. happening and once you know this information you can't unknow it and it scares the hell out of you to an extent and then you just accept it and then you just want other people to understand what's going on so they can live the best life possible and and try to mitigate what's going on mitigate the damages so what are you, what do you guys have conclusions that you're coming to um, from absorbing this information? And again, it, it doesn't just include one side of the, the coin. It has all the uh, information that's out there. Uh, that's a good question about conclusions. Um, you know, as a, an intelligence of content analyst, I mean, the way we work is no, our job is to watch trends, um, and to try and communicate them. But there's never a conclusion because there's always something else that's gonna happen. 
And uh, so we don't do conclusions. What we can do is we can um, do inferences. I mean, you can make inferences. And, you know, for example, uh, when we look at tipping points and uh, you can see that uh, scientists' predictions are consistently turning out to be too optimistic, there is something that, you know, you can put in your head and think, well, um, yes, there's more evidence that a lot more is happening a lot faster than we expected. To, you know, that's almost, that is now a cliche, faster than expected. But you can actually watch that happening. I mean, even just with the records categories. I mean, last year, the number of records in the records categories, I mean, this is part of the content analysis thing was, you know, a much lesser percentage of what is now. It's gone crazy. You know, why has it gone crazy? So, you know, it's, there's not a conclusion there. It's just, it shows you that there is something happening. But, you know, the conclusion, you know, could well be um, what, what's called near-term human extinction. And I suspect it will be, but it's not our job to make that conclusion. It is our job to point people to look at the information so that if they want to come to a conclusion, they come to it themselves. I'm not trying to persuade anybody of anything, certainly not as a content analyst. Um, yeah, you can't you know, persuade people. I mean, not my job, not my job. You know, you what really we can can't. <laughs> and, well, you know that. Yes. I mean, you're the you're out there amongst all those people. <laughs> either they either they've done some homework themselves or they have not. And, and either they've listened to uh, propaganda sites or the, the mainstream media, or, or they go and find out the truth through research papers and, and scientists and researchers. Mm -hmm. So, and this, that's why this is a great tool, especially for people in the independent media. Graham, I'm dying to know more about what you think. <laughs> well, I think, you know, um, it, it, it is, the, there's several things here. Um, that I'm digesting that I think are really valuable. First of all, um, the whole point of letting the data speak for itself is fantastic because that's the thing sort of everybody, I think everybody kind of feels like they know they're getting lied to in one capacity or another. And when you just let the data speak, just let the facts speak, speak for themselves. And then there's also how you make the messaging. And I think what Jennifer's talking about of making it more emotional, that's what's gonna wake people up because you can inundate them with data and they're gonna go, hmm. But if you show them, you have to kind of scare them. I mean, I, 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 I hate to say it, but just you have to brand them. And just from a, from a branding marketing standpoint, people don't really, something doesn't really, it takes, they need to see it in three different places before it really lands. I mean, I just know this just is like, I don't know, trying to sell tickets to my live comedy shows. They need to hear me talk about it on my show. They need to see a tweet about it. And they need to see a Facebook ad or something like that. And that's when they're going to kind of wake up. And I think we need to approach it from that same strategy of getting the data, putting these concise, emotional, or even, I mean, that's one of the reasons I try to bring some comedy to it, uh, is if people are laughing, they're way more open to hearing your side of it. I think uh, that's brilliant. That, yeah. um, is that, you know, to get people to laugh. I mean, I'm a, you know, I, I presume you're a, a, a fan of Bill Hicks and uh, you know <laughs> Bill Hicks did it and I you're trying to do it and I you know it is I don't think I mean this is this is where kind of we came in on and, and you know why I sent the the, the clip um, that we started with was that um, I was wondering you coming on the show um, you know how is this going to be funny. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, that song, that, that song was great. Obviously, it was talking about, you know, yeah. an atomic apocalypse, yeah, but we're true. facing one now. And I think that's, we need to sort of get people laughing and paying attention. That song, you know, is very, it's very pertinent today. It is. And yeah, that's why I just remembered it. And I love that you said that. I can't believe you forgot you sent that to me. How can you forget that? <laughs> so well, cool. I, you know, I mean, like, and this is what I'm trying to do. Like yesterday, 
I read an article and I even did a video on it about how Joe Biden said we need to find a middle ground oh, with climate there's change. There's no time. There's no, I, time. there's no time. There, I, we, we have no carbon budget. We have right. no middle ground. We can't do this thing halfway. And that's why I say a grand awakening has to happen in humanity. This is this is not like, well, we can make this little policy change and, you know, people can get the solar panels and we can do this can sort of, you know, light bulb changing and then we can drive less. No, 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 no. See, this is the thing that people have to take on board. This is a whole revolution for humanity that has to happen. This is an awakening. This is like the biggest thing that has ever happened to us. So another point I'd like to make. So in 1988, 30 years ago, James Hansen testified before Congress. And he told us all of these things, you know, in, in so many words. And it was very difficult to see these things in those days. There were no articles out. It was a completely kind of almost crazy concept. But look at us, 30 years later, there's one thing to understand about climate, and that is that it is exponential in its nature. And what that means is that it gets into kind of a runaway sort of feedback loop thing. And now it's becoming very easy to see. And we do have an awakening that's starting to happen at the mass level. But it's while we're on this train, we are on the train and the train is accelerating and it is getting faster and faster. So in the years ahead, we're going to be seeing more storms, more tornadoes, more fires, more droughts, more disasters of all types. And this is going to interrelate with the economy. And, you know, we all understand that we're on this kind of precipice. So now is the time that humanity has to really open its eyes and wake up all together to understand how to possibly address this. Yeah, and one of the, the points that I was bringing up with that middle ground thing was how to attack that sort of ridiculous pragmatic centrism that the Democratic Party seems to be so in love with. So I always make sort of historical reference jokes. I said, yes, that's, you know, it, it's, it's too bad Rosa Parks didn't move up just to the middle of the bus because when she went to the front of the bus, it caused all that commotion. And then there's all these people making, and I, and I make that like when Dianne Feinstein belittled those Girl Scouts who wanted a Green New Deal, I was like, imagine if Dianne Feinstein was alive in the 20s and she said, hey, women's suffrage movement, d d don't call, you're being too alarmist. Settle down, this'll take a while. It'll be bipartisan support. Maybe women will get the right to vote in the 40s or the 50s or the 60s. And I just keep making that historical joke. I was like, you remember when JFK said, putting a man on the moon by the end of the 60s, too difficult, can't get it figured out. Maybe we'll get someone on the moon later on down the road. And that's the historical reference point I keep trying to make. And also it's something that, that Chris and I have talked about when I've interviewed for my show is I make the point of there's a meteor coming towards the planet that's gonna wipe us all out and it's called climate change and we need to do something about it now. And um, it's going to take mass resistance, mass strikes. It's going to take um, all kinds of stuff like that. So I think that's important. And I'm trying to find as much humor in that as, as possible when I make my videos or even talk about it on stage. Um, but it's also got to kind of wake people up because the, the messaging is so powerful. Because you're talking about the oil lobby has trillions of dollars to spend and they have done it for the last four decades that's why they control all the media that's why the oil companies buy ad time on all of them fox msnbc all of them so i say we have to be so uh we have to use the internet to get this messaging across um that it's happening now and it needs to be it needs to be drastic and and i always say this too i go i go look we fix everything else racism, sexism, wage, poverty, but we don't fix the climate, the environment, it's over, lights out. So I just sort of speak matter of factly about yeah. that. 
Yeah, that's well, true. But and you know, one thing that really depresses me about this whole thing is sort of the inevitability of our situation and the fact that corporations completely control our fate at this point. And I don't know how to get out of that. I mean, corporations are controlling absolutely everything, as mm -hmm. you've just mentioned, Graham, like the oil lobby, for example, but that goes for all of it, you know, how, how can that possibly change? Do you know? Well, to me, I look at I look at I look at mass I look at strikes and I look at the effectiveness of strikes and we need to employ implement that with in in terms of reversing climate change. So look at like look what the air traffic controllers did. They basically ended the government shutdown by just sort of teasing with shutting down planes because they went because the only thing the corporations understand they don't understand they have no soul we can't shame them we can't say what about your grandchildren they don't care they only care about money they only understand that so we need to attack them financially and that's like i look at like look what uber and lyft just did right they just went on strike and they're starting to get to look at all of the teacher strikes many of them in red states they shut school down we have to we can't have protests on saturdays and then we all go back to work on Monday. That we have to do general strikes. We need everybody to say we're not buying. We're not. No one's buying gas today. Just for. Or, I mean, I don't know what. I'm just throwing out ideas. But I see how labor has has changed things. And you know, I, I look at creative ways to to just strike and resist in nonviolent ways. I look at the Tokyo bus driver strike. So they didn't shut down the buses because they were like, well. The elderly, children, people need to get their doctor's appointments. They just, one day, everybody rode the bus for free. That cost their uh, bus company millions of dollars. And oh, all of a sudden, they came to the negotiation table. So that's what it's going to take. And also, when I hear the Green New Deal, the thing that the Sunrise Movement, this is part of uh, AOC's thing, is talking in terms of because the biggest thing they come back with well we just shut down the oil companies what about these jobs well you say part of the green new deal is a federal jobs guarantee that will transition people in the fossil fuel industry they'll make the same money and the same benefits as we transition them into 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 green energy so then you can kind of talk to them from a business standpoint but but it's going to take mass resistance it's going to take shutting stuff down it's going to say nobody's working this week or whatever it is. That's what it's going to take, in my opinion. Right. And for example, like carbon sequestration, that's the act of taking carbon out of the atmosphere. It has to be done both at the source when it's emitted and in the atmosphere itself. Now, when you take carbon out of the atmosphere, you can make a black powder that can be used for something, right? All this carbon powder. So, you know, start an industry around carbon sequestration, make it into a money-making enterprise because money talks and yes. idealism fades. And, you know, it's all great to go and, you know, be idealistic and have marches and all this stuff. But if we don't have something that is actually implementable, that makes money, that people, we're a greedy species, we are greedy in our nature, and we have to use that in the right way. So in this Green New Deal, don't just take, take, take and make it into something where we're getting less, make it into different industries, new industries, industries that make money, because that's really, I think, the only way that you can start to address some of that this. That worries me, though. I just have to say, if, if capitalists get involved, I guarantee you they're not going to do what's right for the people. They'll do what makes money and make it sound right. green. There's already a lot of greenwashing on things that are not green at all. And it just, it, it really just concerns me that capitalists are going to take it over and not do what they need to do. Oh. And everybody will still think they can live exactly the way they're living right now and not make a bit of change when really we need to reduce our energy use a lot. Can I say something? Uh, yes, to, please. Yeah, um, I'm, you know, I sound like it darker and, um, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, You asked me, you know, what the database is pointing at, mm -hmm. um, in a sense. And, you know, I've read all the articles, read not every word of them, but many, many of them, you know, thousands and thousands, and have gone through the process of classifying them and, you know, trying to put them into context. 
and uh, you know, I, I I have a suspicion. It's more than a suspicion that um, that the kind of thing that you are talking about, you are many many years too late. And so, you know, that that then becomes a real, real question is, you know, what are we doing this for? And uh, as I say, I'm on the darker side of the spectrum here. And what I'm doing this for is totally with, you know, agreed with Jennifer. I think it's very, very important that people wake up to what is happening to the human race and to all the other millions of species that are going on around it, that they're being made extinct. You know, there is a massive collapse going on. And, you know, the outcome is very probably not going to be what we would consider anything like a Green New Deal. Um, and so I'm wondering, you know, introducing that kind of uh, thought into the discussion, I, you know, I just, I just have to do that, I'm afraid. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, I personally, and this is not because the database doesn't speak, but, you know, I can personally say what I'm doing is, um, you know, I am preparing myself um, and my surroundings as much as possible uh, for the breakdown of, first of all, the breakdown of society, um, you know, we, you, you, you will have heard of Jem Bendel, um, who is, you know, talking about that. Um, but then on, you know, after that, at some point after that, um, human extinction um, and the whole thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I still think it's important that people understand. I still think it's important that, you know, people you know, one of the things a database can do is give you sort of ideas of time frames. Uh, but I'm I'm growing strawberries because this year, you know, I, I now look at every year as you know potentially the last. I did, might not be the last, um, but you know, I don't do that kind of thing as say, oh, we've got two years until there. There is, by the way, some good news. There was a a, a video that. Guy McPherson talking to, I can't remember his name, a Polish. Um, oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a little bit more optimistic. Yeah. You know, he, as yeah, far he, as the time he, frame, yeah. The, 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 uh, take, the takeaway from that was that no, no Blue Ocean event this year. But he also said that when the Blue Ocean event happens, it will be a lot quicker than, you know, because, um, as the volume, as opposed to the extent of ice decreases, once it goes, there's not that much to melt. It's only a little bit of volume there. So it'll go boom. That's what the, you know, but so um, it's, it's just that, that uh, I don't know how people feel. Oh, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say was that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, my, my attitude now is that and it, I think, should be that all of us are doing all the time is you live as if it is your last year. And so my last year, I'm going to produce, I live in a big house and I have a, a, a 93-year-old landlady and she loves strawberries. She absolutely loves strawberries. And so the last few years I've been sort of buggering about with strawberry that this year I'm going to get it right and we are going to get it right. And everything we do I find, you know, I'm trying to get it right. Whereas, you know, before there's always time to make mistakes and, you know, oh, whoops, we'll do it better next year. No, no, Might we not have do it better next year. We do it now. And mm -hmm. if you don't do it now, and that's the way we should have always lived. But, you know, at least in the time left, and this is where it really comes down to where I'm coming from, in the time left, if people can at least live in a way that is in harmony and somehow with the nature that's left and to give it the respect and love that it deserves. That's worth it. So, okay, that's fine. Little... Yeah, and I, this is why I'm doing this, interviewing people um, who are more like specialists, uh, experts in, in one way or another. Last 
yesterday I, I got to interview um, Paul Beckwith, who is very well known and respected for his work in climate. And um, it, he even he is like, I don't know. I don't know when, when is what's going to happen. And it's, you know, it could happen anytime. And it, it's not looking good. At least it's going to be worse and worse every single year. And with all the flooding we have um, from coast to coast, from Canada down, you know, it, rebuilding all that stuff and rebuilding all that stuff, that's just going to add to the pollution and, and the taking of natural resources and all that. The, Oh my gosh! When you start to think about it, it's overwhelming. I don't know, Graham. You need to step in at one point and tell me what you think because this is really hard hitting stuff. It's really deep. I, I'll wait on this, and then I, and I actually have to go. But um, okay, I understand. Yeah. Uh, for me, if I look at the gloom and doom aspect of it, then I come to a conclusion of well, why should I do any of this? I should just. There's no point to it. This is just my 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 opinion. I think um, we should mitigate it anyway and not hurry it up. Not yeah, I mean, if I just, so my approach is I'm going to do everything that I can. I think we need to wake the whole world up mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to, I'm going to do everything I can. Look, we're all going to die one way or the other. So, um, I mean, I mean, I'm going to try to do my best if I just, and, and get everybody as awake as they possibly can. And, and if, if the whole, everybody gets involved and we have billions of people across the planet really waking up. All around the same time, then we have a shot at reversing this. We have, um, there's been many other times in throughout history where uh, nothing as dire as this for sure, but where everybody, it looked really dire and no one knew what to do and then everybody got involved and they found solutions. There's solutions out there that we haven't even thought of yet, not to mention if we put the funding into it and all that. So it is doable. For me, I have to have that approach to get up every morning. Otherwise, I'm just going to like, what's the point? I might as well just... Right. Can I answer that for a minute? Yeah, if you've got a minute, I'd just like to, you know, respond to Yeah, you. we're over an hour, so, yeah. Oh, okay, just possible. very, very briefly. Um, you know, I was exactly like you um, five, six years ago. And since then, having been exposed to this, the conclusion that I've come to, I haven't given up. I'm not depressed, um, particularly. You know, it's to, to, you know, do my best and, as I say, to appreciate and live as best you can with the time that's left. And, that you know, it's not about outcomes. It's about process. And that's where I agree with you. If your feeling is that, you know, waking people up and we agree there is very important, that's what we've got to do. You've got to do what's important. Um, and uh, it, it doesn't really make the outcome is not the not the thing here. It's the process. So you know, I grow strawberries. That's great. I grow veggies. <laughs> well, we grow all kinds of other veggies too. Yes. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying so, the hell out of gardening. It's like I haven't done it for so many years, and I just started again this year, and I love it. Yeah. It, I live in I, an apartment. And I and I, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a process. This is a time where there's going to be a great outpouring. There's going to be a lot of artistic things coming out because mm -hmm. everybody's going to be waking up and they're going to be responding to it. And just because, I mean, I actually happen to be more along Yan's um, mindset. I, I don't want to be... Um, you know, through Yan's mindset, but but I've looked at the data and I, I mean, I'll just tell Hold you on. right now. Sorry, Jen Jennifer, just one second. Let's say goodbye yes. to Graham so he can oh. get out of here because we've held him over the time Thank frame. You, Graham. Lovely to meet you. Thank and you so love much, you, Graham. I, I really would love to see you. some humor on this, uh, especially about people becoming stupid. <laughs> yes, do a story on that one. <laughs> That I'll would be a good one. I'll do a story on that. I'll just show you how it's all the stupid people and how they've been affected. There you go. That would be funny. You could make that really funny. Starting at the guy. top. Starting at the yeah, top. sorry to interrupt, <laughs> Jennifer. I just wanted to let give Graham an opportunity to get out of here. So Graham, it's been so lovely to meet you. Thank you for Yeah, nice talking with you guys. Thank you so much. Right. Have a good one, Graham. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. All right. I so what I was saying is like, okay, so 
I've done a lot of studies on the Arctic and, and, you know, and, and it just hasn't come to light that much yet in the, you know, in the mass consciousness. But I'll tell you what, when the Arctic sea ice goes, it will come to light and they'll start to see huge changes because that is the hugest. I mean, it's already, it's inevitable. It's going to melt and it's going to release a ton of greenhouse gases, methane, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, whatever, all of it. And things are going to change quickly and abrupt climate change is really going to take off at that time. And at that time, there's going to be a vast realization. And yeah. people are going to say, oh, my God, what have we done? And you can't really refreeze the Arctic. You can't. No, I mean, that's, 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 what, not that's what I always go back to. It's like you can't put that ice back. I mean, maybe we'll come up with some kind of technology to um, replace something with the albedo effect, but whatever we try to do would take up so, so many resources and probably cause more pollution in the process. Right. You know, but that's, but that's just I, because it's inevitable, and then, you were, you know, I, I think it is inevitable, but just because it's inevitable, does that mean we stop trying and we just no. say, well, okay. what the hell, let's just burn it all anyway and go extinct? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we should slow it down as much as we possibly can, not add to the problem and make it faster. That's my whole feeling. I know that, you know, we can't do anything to reverse it, but I do know if we if we just keep going and increasing everything we do, uh, it's going to just make it worse and make it happen faster. So that's, that's my conclusion that I've come to after interviewing all the people I've interviewed. That's where I'm at. So. And, and the fact is that, um, you know, we are increasing it as fast as we possibly can. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. in the database too. I mean, record after record after record when you, you know, carbon dioxide emissions higher than ever before. Yeah. Methane emissions higher than ever before. And it's going to keep increasing as long as we have 275,000 new babies on the, the planet every single day. Higher than ever before, et cetera. And yes, yeah. I mean, people are producing... I mean, there was a story that um, I found the other day. I think that, I don't know whether, are you part of um, the Facebook group, Christine, Climate Change Facts and Consequences? Um, no, but I should be, you. probably. I would love to, I'd love to invite you. Um, oh, yeah, invite me. I'm on Doomer I'm, Humor, because yeah, it's fun. It's, it's, it's very <laughs> sort of, again, neutral, and, you know, uh -huh. it's, but... I like that. One of the stories that came up there, which I sent to Jennifer, was that, you know, in the process of, you know, climate breakdown, you would have thought, I would have thought, that people will have fewer children. Uh -huh. But the actual research, this, 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 this research was saying that no, people are going to have more children. Well, yeah, especially when you have... they're not going out to work, there mm -hmm. won't be contraceptives available and um you know et cetera et cetera et cetera and so you know there it is another crazy right. okay we gotta we, wrap this gotta stop. Up. yeah okay we could go on forever Thank i you. know we could we could and I, i'm more than willing to have you guys on again to talk about it so you know well, don't about, this is the end think of it as the beginning to to promote this this database i think it is you. a fabulous idea. I think it's very much needed, especially for people in the media, uh, to have a one-stop shop for, for the information they need. You know what I mean? So um, if anyone has any questions really quick, now is the time. I know it's late. I said I said a quarter or two that we would take questions, but it's so hard. There's so much information to get out. Um, but let me just say hello to some of the people because this is their channel. It was really cool to see Forsaken here. Of course, Sandy, Kent Deal, Vigimatic, um, Human is always awesome. Eric Lake Lakin, thank you for coming. Um, Pat, the Batman fan, always awesome. Um, Trev B5 and Ashiva and Gray Silverback. Ah, thanks, guys. They say such sweet things in my chat. They are so nice. Um, Okay, so let's see, Ashiva, I think we could try dumping salt from Utah salt flats and the Him Himalayas into the brine pools of the Antarctic to stimulate faster ocean wave motion. Huh, That's, I, I don't know. I wish, I'm gonna have to find a scientist to ask that question. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that would have been a good one for Paul. He probably would, would know. Um, that was on yesterday. Okay, yeah, thanks everyone. Maggie May, hi. 
live with urgency. This is Maggie May. What an intense conversation. Learned so much. Thank you, Maggie May. She does really good little short videos. Um, mm -hmm. Really funny, just hilarious. So if you get a chance, check out her channel. Um, okay. All right, guys. It doesn't look like we have questions coming up. So I guess we're good. Um, let's close this out. I just want to let everybody know that tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Monday, Monday Madness, I'm going to have special guest um, co-host Trent, Trent Black um, from the chat. We're going to get to know him. He's going to talk a lot about the Midwest flooding and what's happening. They're actually flooding all over. It's not just the Midwest. He's just going to talk about that. Um, and then we'll, I, I'm inviting Vegematic to come on. I'm going to um, invite Paul on again and anyone, you know, who's really interested in coming on and just having a Monday madness, crazy chat as well, you know, hit me up and, and I'll get you a link to the show. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you so much, Jan. I, I, I am so happy you guys came on with me today and, and informed everybody of, of this really important project you guys are working on. And I can't wait to see it, it, it through to the, the videos, mind breaking, starting it. Uh, watch out for that guys. Yeah. Uh, there are a bunch of links in, in the show description. So check into those and we will, yeah. Talk to you soon. You guys have a very okay. good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you so much for having us on. Thank you.